All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question for today. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So for the factoring, you're going to have x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. For the math knowledge question, for the circle P on the left, the radius is 9. So that means that this length here is also 9. But they told us that this part here was 2, so that means that this part over here is going to have to be a 7. For the circle on the right, circle Q, the radius is 12. So this whole length would be 12, but since this part is 2, the rest of it is 10. So if you add those together, you get a total of 19 for the length of PQ. So that would be your answer. So we're looking at lesson 26. We're looking at derivatives of e to the x and ln of the absolute value of x, derivatives of sine of x and cosine of x, and exponential growth and decay. So for derivatives of e to the x, ln of the absolute value of x, sine of x and cosine of x, those you're going to have to memorize. We will later in the year go over where the derivatives come from, but for now they want you to just memorize them. And then for exponential growth and decay, that should be a review from pre-calculus and possibly even from algebra 2. Um, so hopefully you'll remember exponential growth and decay. So starting with derivative of e to the x. Very few functions are their own derivative, but e to the x is one of them. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So we will learn why that is later. Don't worry about the why. Focus on memorizing that it is just e to the x. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Again, we'll learn why that is much later in the year, but for now, just focus on the fact that it is 1 over x. For the derivative of the absolute value of x, it is also 1 over x. The absolute value doesn't play a, um, a factor in the derivative. Derivative of ln of x or the absolute value of x is just 1 over x. Okay? So we're going to use those derivatives for this example. Given that this is our function, we want to find the derivative. So we're going to use 4 times what is the derivative of the ln of x? This is something you're supposed to be memorizing. Looking back at your notes, it is 1 over x. Okay? What is the derivative of e to the x? Hopefully you just said e to the x, and you would be correct. And then we need to do the derivative of 2x squared. So we have 2. The derivative of x squared would be 2x, and then we would do 2 minus 1. So all of that would simplify to 4 over x minus 6e to the x plus 4x. And so that would be your answer. That's how you use those um, derivatives. Okay, so now we're going to do this one. We're going to take the derivative of each individual term, and then after we do that, we're going to tell how it differs from the derivative in the first example. So we're going to have 4. What is the derivative of ln of the absolute value of x? 1 over x. And then what is the derivative of e to the x? Just e to the x. And then we have 2 times derivative of x squared is 2x to the 2 minus 1. And so if you simplify it, you get 4 over x minus 6e to the x plus 4x. And so if you look back, how does that derivative differ from the derivative in the first example? So they look the same. The only difference is your x values. In this one, x can be any real number because we can plug in any number here because it's the absolute value. But in the previous problem, x has to be greater than 0. It's a real number such that x is greater than 0. Not equal to because you can't take the ln of 0. So it's just the difference of the domain um, and what values you can plug in for x. But the derivatives look the exact same. All right, so now we're going to look at derivatives of sine and cosine. 
So the derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So y'all write those down. You have to memorize them. Those are things that you're going to have to memorize. If you don't memorize them, you're not going to be able to pass your test because they start showing up a lot and not just saying, what is the derivative of sine? Um, it's going to start applying them into problems. So you have to make sure that you memorize them. Okay? So we want to find the derivatives here. So if we're looking for the derivative, we're going to do 3. And then what is the derivative of sine? The derivative of it is cosine. Okay? And then we have minus, what is the derivative of cosine? Hopefully you're saying negative sine. And then what is the derivative of e to the x? It's just going to be e to the x. So this would actually be 3 cosine of x plus sine of x plus 2 e to the x. So that would be your answer for that example. So they're going to just give you problems like this where you're just finding the derivatives and you're just working on memorization. You're trying to memorize what the derivative of e to the x is, what the derivative of cosine, what the derivative of sine, what the derivative of ln of x, what all of those are. That's what the problems are going to be focusing on. So don't skip them. Don't just write the answer from the answer sheet. Actually practice trying to memorize them because you're going to have to do it on your test. All right, so let's see if you can do this one by yourself. So you'll pause the video real quick, and then I'll go over it. All right, so for the derivative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So you end up with 3 sine of x plus 3 over x minus 2 cosine of x for your answer. And you leave it just like that. Okay. Now we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. Hopefully you dealt with this before a of t equals a sub o e to the kt. This is the amount at whatever time you're looking at. This is the original amount. E is just your e on your calculator. K is your constant. And then t is your time. So hopefully you remember a little bit about those. So let's look at an example. The number of bacteria present at noon was 400, and then nine hours later it had numbered 800. We are assuming exponential growth, or if it was decay, then it would have gone from 400 down. But you still work the problem the same way um, as whether it's growth or decay. So it says find the equation that describes the number of bacteria as a function of t where t is in hours, and then find the number of bacteria present at noon the next day. So we're going to start with our formula. All right, so at noon, that was our original amount. We started at 400. You're never going to, or I shouldn't say never, you usually won't be told your k. You'll usually have to find it. It would be very rare for the, them to give that to you. And they told us after nine hours, our total amount was 800. So you're going to solve for your K. So the way you're going to do that is to divide by 400 and so that gives you 2 equals E to the 9K. Then you're going to put an LN on both sides. And so we have ln of 2 equals ln of e to the 9k. We pull the 9k to the front. And what is the ln of e? That just goes away. And so then to find your k, you're going to divide by 9. So your constant is ln of 2 over 9, which you want to leave 
like this. You don't want to make a decimal because then it's not going to be as accurate um, changing it by just a small decimal where you round or whether you use the whole decimal can change your answer by a large amount. So you want to leave it as ln of 2 over 9. So our formula that they are asking for, our equation, that would be the equation that they are asking you for. That gives it as a function of t. Okay. So now we want to know how many bacteria were present at noon the next day. So 400 e ln of 2 over 9. So we started at noon one day and they want to know at noon the next day. So our time is going to be 24 hours because we started at time 0 with 400 and another day later is 24 hours. So you're going to plug that into the calculator. So the way that's going to work, you're going to do 400 and then you're going to do e which is second and the ln button. You should see the little e in blue. And then we're going to do, I'm actually going to do 24 and then ln of 2. Close your parentheses and then divide by 9. And then hit enter and you should get 2539.8417. And so if you estimate and round that to the nearest whole number, you get 2,540. And so that's how many bacteria were present at noon the next day. If you want to give me the decimal, um, that's fine. I will take it. Technically, you can't have a whole, back, I mean, you can't have a fraction of a bacteria. You have to have whole. But I'm okay if you want to do um, the decimal or the whole number. Either one of them is fine with me. All right, so your homework is 1 through 25, so make sure that you do those tonight so that we can go over any questions that you have.